welcome to Make Thrift Buy. This is the show where you guys send in cool clothes or accessories that you found on the internet and then I do my best to recreate them. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different because we're not going to be making clothes for humans, we're going to be making them for dogs. Thank you to Derek, Artsy Girl, Debbie, Sinem, CC, and Asuka for suggesting that I try this out. So, everybody meet my puppy, Ella. <laughs> she currently lives with my parents and my parents live in a pretty cold part of Australia. Yes, Australia does have cold parts. Anyway, when it's cold, Ella really doesn't like going outside to go to the toilet or for early morning walks. We recently had a cold snap and it's been below freezing temperatures some nights. We haven't had any snow yet, but fingers crossed. So I wanted to be prepared and make her a couple of sweaters for the cold weather. Although I have to admit, making her cute clothes is also very much to the benefit of me because she's going to look damn adorable in them. So let's get started. I used a piece of butcher's paper to draft my pattern, but you can use any kind of paper. Newspaper, pattern paper, whatever. First, I folded the piece of paper in half like this. Next, I measured Ella's length from about where her collar would normally sit to where I wanted the sweater to end, which was just before the hind legs. So I marked that length on the paper right on the fold. Next, I broke this body length measurement up into three sections. The first length is from the collar to approximately where the arms and the rib cage starts. The next length is from that last mark to where the rib cage ends. And then the final length is from where the rib cage ends to just before the hind legs, which is where I wanted the sweater to end. Next, I measured around Ella's neck, where her collar usually sits, making sure it's snug but not too tight. I made sure that I could still fit a couple of fingers underneath. I divided that measurement by four and I drew it onto the paper, perpendicular to the fold like this. The next measurement is around the largest part of her rib cage, which on Ella is just behind her front legs. Again, I divided this by four and I drew it onto my paper. The next measurement is around the bottom part of Ella's rib cage. I divided this by four and I drew it onto the paper. Then I measured around the smallest part of Ella's waist, just in front of her hind legs, divided this measurement by four and I drew it onto the paper. Next, I connected up all of these lines like this. Now for the most technical part, the leg holes. First I measured from the point where Ella's collar usually sits to the top of her front leg. This will be my horizontal measurement, which is basically just how far her front leg is away from the collar. Then I measured the distance between her two front legs and I divided this by two, which will be my vertical measurement or how far away each leg hole will need to be from the center of the sweater. The final measurement is the circumference of Ella's front legs, right at the very top of her leg there. By dividing this measurement by pi, it gives me the diameter of the circular leg hole, which will go here. And just in case you didn't know or you've forgotten your basic maths from school, the diameter of a circle is basically the width of that circle going right through the center of the circle. The radius is half that measurement. The last thing I did was to add seam allowance at the top and the bottom of the pattern. If the material you're planning on using is not particularly stretchy and we'll get into fabrics in a moment, you'll also need to add a seam allowance to the side like this. Then using a pin, I stuck it right through the center of the circle through both layers of the paper like this. So I'll know where to draw the other leg hole once I unfold this. And then with a pair of scissors, I cut through both layers of paper and then I unfolded it to give my full pattern. To finish off the pattern, I made a mark on top of the pinhole showing me where the center of the armhole circle is. And then I measured the radius outwards from this point to give myself a cross, which I turned into a circle. Then I cut the armholes out and here is my finished pattern. Lastly, make sure to give your puppy a huge cuddle for being such a good sport. Okay, now we have a pattern, it's time for the actual sweater making. Now the material you want to use will vary on your dog's breed and where you live. I'm going to be using a pretty light knitted material for Ella. However, really small or short haired puppies like Chihuahuas might be more comfortable in something a bit thicker like polar fleece. You also really want to be using a fabric that has a lot of stretch in it because that way your dog will be the most comfortable and lots of stretch also leaves you a little bit of room for error in your measurements. So to turn this human sweater into a dog sweater, first I made sure that the front and the back of the sweater were aligned and then I pinned the front and the back of the sweater together. 
I placed the pattern down on top of the sweater like this, and because this fabric is very stretchy, I won't need to use that optional side seam allowance. So I folded it out of the way on both sides of the pattern like this. I also used a shortcut and I placed the bottom of the pattern onto the bottom of the sweater so that I won't have to hem or finish the bottom edge, which also means that I won't need the bottom seam allowance either. So I fold that out of the way. Now, because I'm staying at my parents' house at the moment, I didn't have any of my fancy sewing equipment like my rotary cutter. So to cut out the fabric, I had to improvise. And I placed some heavy coasters down on top of the pattern to stop it from moving. And then I traced around the outside of the pattern directly onto the sweater. With the pins all still in place, I cut through both layers of fabric with a pair of scissors. Which gave me these two identical shaped pieces. Then I chose one of these pieces to be the tummy piece. On this piece, I placed the pattern directly on top of it and then I traced the armholes out onto the fabric. And then I cut them out. Now I have two similar but slightly different pieces. This one's my back piece and this one's my tummy piece. To make little sleeves on this sweater, I used fabric from the sweater sleeves, which I removed. And then I drew a rectangle onto, which was three and a half inches long and the circumference of Ella's front leg minus an inch wide. Important to note is that when I stretch this rectangle out, it stretches to a little bit longer than Ella's front leg circumference. You want the sleeve to be a little bit smaller than the armhole, but not too small that it's gonna be uncomfortable on your dog. So I cut out two of these, folded them in half, and then sewed down each edge here. Now I'm going to show you how I added on one of these sleeves. To add this sleeve, I turned this tube inside out so that the nasty seam is on the inside, and then I folded it in half like this. I also tried the little sleeves on Ella's front legs before sewing them on to make sure they wouldn't be too tight. Luckily, they fit perfectly. Dog leg warmers, anyone? <laughs> Next, to add the sleeves to the tummy piece, which is lying right sides up, I placed the sleeve raw edges down into the hole. Then I slid my finger underneath and I grabbed the sleeve from the underside and I'm going to pin the sleeve on around the hole like this. Essentially, I'm pinning the pieces right sides together, but I'm doing this on the wrong side of the sweater. The sleeve circumference is a little bit smaller than the hole, which is what we wanted. So I also had to kind of stretch the sleeve while pinning it on. I basically just added pins in four different places around the hole. And then I sewed the two together all the way around the hole like this. While sewing, I made sure that I was only sewing through two layers at a time and that the other part of the sleeve wasn't getting caught underneath. I also used a zigzag stitch. Some things that would also help here are a stretch or a ballpoint needle and a walking foot. But unfortunately, I only had my parents' very basic sewing machine, which was actually my first sewing machine, which has no fancy stitches, needles or sewing feet available. I kind of wanted to show you guys that this will still work on a very basic machine. It might not look as professional, but it'll still work just fine. Anyway, once both the little sleeves were attached, I placed the back piece on top. Both of the pieces right sides together, pin them together and then I sewed down both sides like this. My parents' house also didn't have any matching thread for this sweater, so I had to put up with white, which because the fabric's stretchy, you're gonna be able to see slightly on the seams, but somehow I doubt Ella will care. To finish off the top raw edge of the dog's sweater, I'm going to use this braided collar that was off the original sweater. So I chopped that off and figured out how long it needed to be by placing it next to the sweater's raw edge like this. Because this braided material also stretches, I wanted it to be a bit shorter than the neck circumference. I sewed the collar together like this, turned it around so that the raw seam is on the inside, and then I placed it on top of the neck hole of the sweater like this, matching up the raw edges. While sewing it onto the neck hole, I made sure to scratch the braided collar piece as I went. I sewed it on first with a straight basting stitch and then followed it up with a zigzag stitch. Flipping the collar up, this is what it looks like. The sweater is now done. So, how did I go?
So the dog sweater in one of the suggestions I received actually also had a hood on it. Now I've learned from experience that while Ella will tolerate sweaters, she hates hoods. Not a fan at all. So to show you how to make a hood, I made one for Ella's friend, Zelda. So real quickly, how to make a hood. Once the base jumper is finished, fold it in half like this and line it up with some sweater leftovers. Two layers of fabric sandwich right sides together like this. Trace the shape of a hood onto the fabric. Put pins in it and sew it together like this. Flip it the right way around and I couldn't really get good footage of this because it was so tiny. Attach the hood onto the collar of the dog sweater with the right sides of both materials together, lining up the center of the hood with the middle back of the sweater. Sew it on and you have a hoodie. So if you're going to dress your dog up in sweaters, should you buy them or should you make them for yourself? What do you think, Ella? That's right, make! and using thrifted materials to make it with. It is so simple to make dog clothes and it's a good way to recycle an old sweater or a t-shirt that you don't use anymore, while also keeping your puppy warm in winter. I even did it on a really cheap sewing machine without any special needles, thread, or stitches to show you just how easy it is. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much to all of my patrons for helping to make this video possible. To support me on Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.